Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying the end of your work week, hopefully. I don't know if everyone gets the fourth off. I don't know if you have to work on the fourth and the fifth and maybe even the sixth and you only get the uh, seventh off. I don't know how the story goes. All I know is I got lucky and blessed to have the fourth off. I would have had to work the fifth, but because I requested the fifth off and everyone else did too, he gave us the entire through the weekend off. So cheers to that. That being said, yeah, we're gonna go see some fireworks. We're probably gonna go onto the Marine Corps base out in 29 Palms, 29 Stumps. The devil's elbow or the devil's butthole, however you want to look at it. But yeah, you know what? We're going on there. We're going to enjoy ourselves and have a great time. I think it's a, as a military member, I can't think of a better place to actually go for fireworks because you don't have to worry about all the hood rats and all the BS happening at some other unknown event and then people, you know, talking and, and just saying stuff that you don't want them to say around your kids and whatnot or doing things that are inappropriate, etc. Anyways, offside topic of that. I had one question from a viewer from Cameron MX9. Uh, he actually asked me, hey man, uh, what do you think of the Quinn nut drivers? My response to that basically told him, uh, I don't think they're worth it. Now, it's not saying that they're bad quality or, or good quality. Why I said it's not worth it is because of this. A while back, when I first started my automotive career, I actually bought a snap-on, it was a three or five piece set, and included the, uh, the shoe spring tool, the spoon, and though this is not the exact same nut driver because I actually leave it at work to use it as an extension and universal tool, Carlisle actually does make it, so it's the same exact thing. This is how it came, it was attached. In the beginning, being a youngster, first year running as a, a lube tech, I didn't know uh, that this could have been used this way because it didn't cross my mind. Here's for the small uh, drum springs. If you flip it over and you put it this way, you can get onto the larger drum springs. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but look, I can detach it, right? I can flip it. What else can I do with it? Even better, what else I can do with it? One little thing I forgot to add on to here, which we'll toss in right now. So even though I'm not using the drum spring mechanism tool that comes with it, I can actually take a socket, eight millimeter, plug it onto the end, and now I have a nut driver. Oh, it just, that fastener just jumped up to a 13 or 15, boom. Just jumped up again. I mean, as big as your quarter inch sockets will go, that is as big as this driver will take. So now you have your nut driver for free because you basically already bought a brake tool kit. If you didn't buy a brake tool kit because you don't do a lot of shoes, that's cool. You can actually buy this for under 20 bucks over at Napa, it's made by Carlisle. My favorite part about it is you cannot get enough leverage or twisting force with your wrist. Those of us that are older, okay, we don't have enough twisting force to do this for years on end. So what do we end up doing? A couple things. One, you can use a quarter inch ratchet on this one. Now, not all of them, but this one in particular and the snap-on one in particular, I can attach a quarter inch ratchet to it however long I need to to crack something loose. Once it's loose, and I don't know that I actually have it here because it's at work. Yeah, it is. You can use a cordless gun. Oh, actually, I do have a quarter inch driver here. You could use a cordless gun, plug it into the bottom, and now you have yourself a faster way of either loosening or tightening specific fasteners. So keep that in mind. So what do I think of nut drivers? I would not ever spend any of my money on a nut driver set. Uh, once upon a time ago, my dad bought me one. I tried to use it, and it didn't have a quarter inch adapter on the end of it. It was one from Harbor Freight. It was one of their first ones they had. And I was like, you know, outside of adjusting carburetors uh, very minutely, I just, I really cannot see any purpose of having this set. It was a nice set. It was a nice 
thing that my dad did for me and I was like, look, I appreciate it, but it just, it wasn't a tool that I'm gonna find myself using a lot because between cordless and, and you know, using a ratchet or anything else, there's faster ways of doing something and that's the overall goal as an automotive technician to do it faster, uh, to be more proficient. Now, you don't wanna overkill it, you know, so say you put a, I don't know, an eight millimeter on it, you're tightening up a hose clamp. Tighten it up, when it starts to snug up too much, snap. Then if you want to, do by hand, feel it out, make sure it's tight enough to where it's not gonna cause a leak or a vacuum leak or a coolant leak or whatever. So that's why I do not buy just nut drivers themselves. They are a wasted expenditure in my point of view. All right, before we wrap up this video, I did have one little rant. I was watching the Flat Rate Master. Now, I love the Flat Rate Master. Do not get me wrong, this is not a shit-talking video, but this is a correctional video. He posted a video today about how technicians really need to start changing out the crush washers or the gaskets on oil drain plugs. Now, I've got a handful. I, I have them here as, as an example, okay? I've got a ton of them. I've got the blue plastic ones, which suck and leak all the damn time. I've got the little hardened cardboard style, which suck and leak all the time. I have the aluminum ones, which are okay, but still not the best option. Look, the reason why I have those three different styles in particular is because those are the three different styles that we used all the time at Sears Auto Center and nothing else. And you know what happened? Shit leaked. Okay, but they do make certain crush washers that come with an aluminum insert that wraps around the inside much like an AC washer. And those end up working out a lot better. So good, in fact, that you can actually reuse them. Now, I have a drain plug that has a rubber insert that's built into the plug itself on the Mariner. My drain plug doesn't leak. I've had my Mariner drain plug on the same exact car since I've bought it. I can't, I, I think I average between two and three oil changes on my Mariner per year. And for the last four years, I still have not had to change out that drain plug or the washer gasket that's built into the drain plug. It works, it seals, it does what it has to do. Once it starts to formulate a drip, then yes, absolutely. Either change out the little rubber insert that goes onto the drain plug or the whole entire drain plug in general. It doesn't cost very much. If you work at a shop that has them, maybe 10 to 20 cents for the actual rubber gasket itself that fits in there. If you can't find one and you have to replace the whole plug, maybe, what, two to five bucks, something like that? Cool, replace it then. But you don't have to add that to the ticket every single oil change. That's gonna rack it up. They're gonna say, why are we replacing it? Your, your service manager or owner should be asking you, why are we having to replace the oil drain plug? Was it leaking? No, it's a precautionary measure. That's not a good enough reason. Was it leaking? No. Put the old one in. If you're skeptical, if it's gonna leak again, then bring the car back in, put it back on the lift, put it back up in the air after you do a three to seven mile road test. And if it's leaking, then yes, we will replace it. And you're thinking, that might be a waste of oil. No, there's a couple of different methods that you can do. You can one, catch all the oil in its own individual container using a funnel and whatever means possible to catch all the oil so that way you save it and you're not having to reuse the oil. Or I'm sorry, you're not having to waste the oil. The second thing is, if you have a powerful shop vac, I'm not talking about that cordless Milwaukee shit, okay? We have a cordless Milwaukee vacuum. It does not have enough sucking force to hold a vacuum within an engine. However, like the Ryobi uh, three and a half or I can't, four, four and a half horsepower shop vac that I have here at the house, and I'll show you another video later on when I do my next oil change. You can take the tube of that, put it over the fill port, hit the go button, have it pull a vacuum, and if you were to take the drain plug out while somebody else is on top and holding it there, you can actually maintain that back into the point where you'll lose no oil and you can change the drain plug out without ever having to drain it. Be smarter, right? Work smarter, not harder, that kind of thing. Little tricks, little tips. Hope this video helps some of you guys out. That's my mini little spiel, my little 
two cents worth on the uh, video I just watched from the Flat Rate Master. Look, I love his channel, I'm not talking shit, just sharing with you my opinion about the whole ordeal. Would I replace a drain plug washer every single time an oil change came in? No. If it had a problem and it was leaking and it was a problem, yes. There's a couple different ways that I can go about it to where I don't have to worry about losing the oil or dissatisfying a customer. Um, but we haven't had any issues since and it's the same thing that's been done every single oil change. That's all I got for this video. Thanks as always for watching. I appreciate you guys. Hope to see you in halls. If you're not there, we'll see you next time. Cheers and deuces.